this video we're going to use a change event in Excel VBA to automatically copy a row of data where an edit is made in a certain column in that row to another sheet in the same workbook. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. On this first sheet called unassigned, I have a list of unassigned projects and I have three additional tabs with the names of different employees as the tab name where I can assign projects to. In column C, I have the assigned to status. So if I make an edit to this dropdown selection and select any one of those three employees, it's automatically going to move this row to the end of that employee's list on their tab. So this is project 10207. If I assign this to J, it's going to automatically get moved to the end of J's list. Before we jump into the code, I want to point out one important step that you need to do in order to set this up to work properly. Now, here is where our edit is going to occur and this is what drives whatever sheet we want this row to be copied to. The values in this drop-down list need to be the exact same as each of our sheet names in the workbook for this to work. So now we're ready to get into the VBA editor window. You can do that by hitting Alt F11 or going to the developer ribbon and clicking on this visual basic button. So normally what I would do for the majority of VBA code is right click, go to insert and module. But this is a change event. It is something that is specific to the sheet where the change occurs. So we actually just want to double click on our unassigned sheet and in this first drop down menu we're going to select worksheet that automatically populates a worksheet selection change event that is not the one we want so I'm going to come down to this second drop down list and we're going to select change I'm going to get rid of this first one because we don't need it now this creates a private subroutine and it creates a default variable called target and this target variable represents the cell on our unassigned sheet where the change occurs so to not make this video so long I've already created the code here and I'm just going to drop it in here and run through it really quick. So we begin by declaring some variables. We have one called target column as the data type long, another called target row as the data type long. We have one called worksheet name as variant. So then we set them up. So our target column is going to be equal to our target variable and then the column property and that returns the column number of where the change occurred on our sheet. Similar thing for our target row. It's just going to return the row number of where the change occurred on our sheet. And then we have a variable called worksheet name. And this of course assumes that the change occurred here in this area. So it's going to capture the target row and the target column intersection and that will get us our sheet name that we'll use assuming that conditions are met in this next line of code for the if statement so our if statement here is if our target column equals three because that is the column that contains our drop down list and the target row is greater than one because we don't want to run our code if an edit is made to our header here and the worksheet name is not equal to nothing in the event someone makes a change down here 
and the worksheet name is not equal to unassigned because we don't want to run this code if someone just reselects unassigned. So if all of these conditions are met, then we want to execute all of this code down here. So we set up a variable, or I should say declare a variable called workbook. We declare a variable called worksheet, which is going to be our destination sheet. We declare a variable called next row, which is going to be the next available blank row on whichever destination sheet we're on based on our drop down list selection. We have an error handler here above our action code here because there's always the possibility that an edit is made elsewhere on the sheet and if that happens our worksheet name variable is going to be equal to something to a sheet name that doesn't exist on our workbook so that is why this is here so we have on error go to error handler here and that just in the event that that happens, it takes us down here to exit the subroutine and not execute any of this code. So if it's not an error and it's a legitimate sheet name, we set our workbook equal to this workbook, our WB workbook variable. And then we set our worksheet variable, which is our destination sheet, equal to our workbook variable and then worksheets and our worksheet name variable that we set up up here and then we set up our next row which is the next available blank row on our destination sheet variable so then we reference our destination sheet and then cells and for our row input we're gonna use rows and then count so that counts every single row so that takes us to the very last row at the very bottom of that destination sheet we know there's always going to be data in column one of that destination sheet and from there we're going to end Excel up that's like hitting control up arrow from the very last row in column one that will take us to the last row containing values in column one and we want to get that row number and add one to it to get the next available blank row so the next line of code we just reference rows which since we're not specifying a sheet here that's going to pick up the rows on our unassigned sheet and we want to get the target row that we're on we want to cut that row and the destination is going to be equal to our destination worksheet variable and then rows and next row to get that data transferred to that first available blank row on our destination sheet following that back on our original sheet on that same target row we just want to delete that blank row that is the end of our if statement so we end our if statement and if we're in a situation where these conditions are met we are at the end of our subroutine and that should be that so now I'll go ahead and assign some of these. So this one will go to Matt 10433. Goes directly to Matt. We'll assign this one to Cindy. That goes to Cindy. And 10412 goes to Jay. And that is that. Well, that is it for now. Thanks for watching.